Hi, thank you very much um, for attending this session in which uh, I will uh, give you a short tour uh, on our journalistic uh, investigation in which we involved thousands of citizens to answer a fairly simple question, which is who owns the city? Um, we did this project in various cities in Germany already. So just to give you an example, we did this in Hamburg already. We did um, went to uh, cities like Düsseldorf, even smaller cities like Lüneburg. And of course, uh, uh, we went to, we also did this investigation in Berlin. So this shows this project, Who Owns Berlin, should serve as an example in this session to tell you a, bit, a little bit more why we actually uh, involved all the citizens, what we achieved, and what were the consequences of our investigation. Um, the housing market crisis, as uh, you all know much better than we do, um, is a global phenomenon. It's, um, it affects all uh, corners of the world, you know, from the large cities from in the United States, like San Francisco, New York, in Europe, even smaller cities. Um, it, it affects people in, in Asia, so it's everywhere, but it has like, it has always different local implications and local challenges. Um, the reason for uh, the housing market crisis are manifold. Uh, I think one major reason which is undisputed is uh, the, was the financial crisis in 2008 and 2009. So after this crisis, the financial market um, looked for new ways to invest money and the um, attractive housing market in the cities especially was a very stable and profitable way to invest a lot of money. So there was a huge influx um, of money in the cities. On the other side, there was hardly any control by the local authorities uh, what this means or how, how, how this money actually affects uh, the market. Because on the one side, if you have like a lot of a lot of companies who are um, expecting a lot of profits. Um, you have on the other side um, people living in the apartments which are affected very, very directly by these kind of profits because profits in the housing market uh, are only possible if rent prices are rising and property prices are rising. Um, this is uh, something you uh, all know, so, um, so I don't want to go into this. Uh, uh, deeper, but want to tell you a little bit more about the local implications and the local challenges here in Germany. In Germany, um, unlike in other European countries, we have a very um, peculiar situation because there is a huge intransparency um, in of the housing market. Uh, this is due to a lack of openness um, uh, uh, of the um, land registry. So there's no public access to the land registry in Germany and uh, we have a very poorly developed uh, transparency register for companies. So it is in Germany uh, more or less um, uh, unknown uh, who is actually in the housing market, which kind of companies are in the housing market. So this is not only a problem for the public that we cannot hold you know, companies accountable for if they do something which they're not supposed to, but it's also a problem for the local authorities, for the cities who just don't know who is actually investing money in their market. So for in these cities, um, the local authorities don't really know the ratio, you know, like um, how many state-owned companies, institutional investors, private investors are in a city. Uh, they cannot really follow if there are hints on money laundering or tax avoidance they cannot really follow um, and uh, punish um, companies or persons um, who are, um, yeah, who are in this um, field of uh, wrongdoings. So for them, it is very hard um, to know about. But it's also like for the public, uh, more or less um, impossible to uh, get into a political dialogue how to regulate the housing market, because if you don't know um, who is in the housing market, you cannot really um, take political steps um, or discuss concrete measures to do this. Um, so this was mainly the reason why we as a journalist thought, you know, we need more transparency, not only because it's important for our work, but it's also important for the general public. Um, as 
we cannot really find out more about the uh, land registries. Um, we had to go and find other ways um, how to how to um, uh, learn more about the structure of the of the market of the ownership um, in the cities. So that's why we came up with the idea: why not asking the tenants who live in the apartments, who know who the uh, owner of the apartment is, and to gather as much information as possible, so we can actually investigate and also like publish stories um, on based on the knowledge of the citizens. Um, for us, um, as, correct, as Corrective, um, this was uh, not a new strategy because we developed a platform a couple of years ago, which is called the Crowd Newsroom, which is uh, um, uh, which is a, an online platform designed to get structured information. So uh, what we actually try to do is um, um, uh, asking the, the, the people not only for... Uh, as a, in, in a form of a survey uh, for information about ownership, but also like asking them to upload proof of their information. We started this project, uh, this project, Who Owns the City, um, about two years ago. Now we are in many, many cities. You see this, so it's like um, nine cities in total at the moment. But the, but the uh, biggest uh, project we did was um, the project on Berlin. So Who Owns Berlin? Um, Berlin, of course, is a very dynamic market. It's especially interesting because the prices of apartments uh, used to be very uh, pretty low, like 15 uh, years ago. But there was a steep rise in the last 10 years. So, in some, yeah, so uh, rent prices uh, went up like 100 percent. If you, uh, you wanted to get a new apartment, and you had a lot of new players coming into the city because it was so attractive for investments. Um, to do a project like this, um, this kind of crowdsourcing, um, is more than just gathering information from the citizens. We also like wanted to get the info, get the citizens involved in a longer, de long-term debate about the shape of their city, how to regulate the city, how to actually demand political. Um, measures um, from the politicians. So we actually went out um, on the streets, um, organized public debates. Um, uh, in other cities, we organized like picnics with mayors. Um, we opened up um, newsrooms in stores. So we tried to, um, tried to be accessible as possible to the citizens, but also like to engage them into uh, debates which they are then leading. So it was a kind of a two-tier project. So to um, get the citizens involved into something, but also to ask them for valuable information. Um, it is, we ask actually um, quite a lot from them because um, we ask them to prove the information they give us. We ask them to upload uh, a copy of the rental of the rent contract or of a document which actually shows who is the who is the owner of the apartment we asked them to share stories which they had um, so there was actually uh, quite a lot of involvement um, of, of, of these people and in Berlin we were able to um, uh, get I think more or less about four thousand. Um, participants uh, in the crowd newsroom who actually uh, gave us information about their situation. So here you can see how the crowd newsroom looks from its side. So from the internal, for, from from the side of the uh, for the journalist, you see that we get a structured structured information we work with, and over a couple of months we set up a team of both newsrooms, a Korrektiv and Tagesspiegel, um, to go through these data and to try to get um, a bigger picture about uh, the market structure in Berlin and to kind of distill uh, some stories out of this which actually explain a little bit in a, in a, in a, a little bit about uh, the market structure. So uh, um, I will give you like four examples of what we did. So one was the example of anonymity. So we actually found out that we have had several entries um, which gave a similar name of uh, names of companies which 
looked quite similar but were not the same. We got hints from a tenant initiatives that there might be a company behind it which owns more than 40 companies in Berlin which own houses which, which are which are not known to be to be one company um, and the owner is far away you know like behind a cascade of other companies in offshore in, in, in offshore countries so we um, with these hint we went to the land registry and we were able to to trace all the apartments apartments all the companies which looked similar and we found out there were about 3,000 apartments here in Berlin owned by a similar structure of companies. The second team traced back these companies um, and uh, could find that they were all kind of uh, traceable to, uh, an, to offshore companies back in the British Virgin Island and we had like through a coincidence we really could find out who is the owner of the offshore company in the British Virgin Islands. So we could could actually show um, in this case, you know, how anonymity works and how easy it is to hide the fact that um, you can be an owner, uh, one of the biggest owner of apartments in Berlin, and but nobody actually knows about. Um, a second uh, story we did was about the large owners in Berlin, so the largest companies. We, we actually um, measured the uh, 10 to 15 large, the largest companies in Berlin, which own, which own most apartments. And uh, we tried to compile or find all the companies which are sub-companies of these large companies. And we provided a service to the reader that they could type in their, um, uh, their owner of their apartment and try to find out if this company is actually a part of one of the large, of the real large um, uh, housing owners in Berlin, so th that you can see actually how big these big companies actually are, even if they are, um, um, because, because, some, because sometimes they don't appear in all the um, rental contracts as the mother company. Uh, another story was um, uh, based on the institutional investors. Uh, this was especially interesting because it shows something about the economic structure, um, how, how the market works um, in, a peculiar, in, a, in, a, in this peculiar way. Uh, so the institutional investors like pension funds or insurance companies in, are shareholders of other companies, of housing companies. And we could show that big, the big pension funds, for example, have shares in all the big housing um, companies. Uh, so that's actually a big network, um, uh, which is a very, very, which is, which goes back to a very small amount of shareholders. Um, but who are behind these shareholders? So if a pension fund is investing money, you know, they are investing money for normal people like you and me who might have a um, pension fund. So we are so this story was also about uh, to show the effect uh, that we are also in an intermediate way um, demanding uh, the profits and, and are kind of raising, uh, are also like participants of, the, of this market. Um, another case was uh, the role of the state-owned companies. So in Germany, you have a lot of, uh, the cities own a lot of, own have uh, own apartment companies, uh, housing companies, uh, through uh, a lot of uh, Freedom of Information Act requests, we could find out um, how big they are, um, uh, in which neighborhoods um, they are, uh, they have their apartments, but also which uh, properties this the cities is actually selling to private investors for developing new buildings. So in Hamburg, for example, we could show that there was one property for two new buildings, which was sold for 40 million euro um, to a private company. Why was this uh, peculiar or special? Uh, because Hamburg um, officially states that they want, that they want to sell these um, state properties uh, to companies which 
give a kind of um, sustainable concepts to develop apartments. But in this case, and as many other, other cases, we can prove that, that they just sold this for the highest bid. Um, and of course, it was a very, very uh, huge company who actually bought this um, very, very small property for 40 million euro. Um, so um, we uh, did this investigation in Berlin, but we also did it, did it now in nine other in nine cities. Um, and in all cities, you know, it has it has it had um, different implications, different results, led to different kinds of debates. But it was very very important to do this project on a local basis because you can really see the differences between the cities and um, also the needs, um, uh, what to regulate. So in Berlin, you can see uh, that there's a demand to regulate um, uh, not only the kind of transparency issues, but also uh, to regulate uh, the markets in terms of controlling money laundering, also like tax avoidance in other cities. Um, it was about other aspe aspects of regulation. So this project shows actually how it can be used for every city, um, not only in Germany, to shed some light on these particular issues in the particular market um, of a city. Um, so uh, what can we actually learn uh, from, the particip from, from this participatory um, approach? Uh, we can learn that you could actually... Um, uh, bring a kind of a flashlight uh, into the into these uh, cities, not only a torch by um, having a very specific investigation, but also like to show a little bit more about the market structure as a whole. Um, and we can see that in Germany, for example, there's a huge demand, of course, to regulate, um, to, to, to uh, control and regulate the real estate market, but also to tackle the problems of tax avoidance, also to discuss you know, um, the role of institutional investors. Um, you can do all this, um, but this can only be done um, on the basis of knowledge, of facts, of information. And uh, this is something, something I think we can take uh, from this project, is that you need... Um, transparency uh, to actually um, get the people and the public uh, into a for to a political debate so they can actually discuss the right measures uh, how to tackle all these problems around the housing market crisis so i hope i could give you some um, uh, insights into this project and why actually we uh, uh, ask so many citizens to participate um, and uh, yeah, so I hope um, this could uh, work as an inspiration for, for other pro similar projects as well. And um, I hope you um, enjoy uh, this fascinating conference. Thank you very much for your patience.